is this thing? Really? She's my girlfriend's losing it now. And, oh no, stop! <laughs> and apparently that's on video too. Anyways, cut that out. <laughs> we were uh, in Utah knocking out some dive stuff with her, and I found a very unique aircraft I've never actually seen in person. So I figured we'd do a video on it and explore it and check it out and see what it's all about. Uh, what I mean by I don't know what it is, I literally have never seen one of these. I thought it was a. C-45 at first, and then I realized it was not, and it has machine guns mounted to the front. So it's definitely not what I, the aircraft I thought it was. So I have to crawl over some snow to try to get to it. And uh, well, that's our adventure now, is trying to get to this aircraft. It looks like it's got five 50 cals they seem to be 50 cal wow all right what is this thing a two warrior I don't know when the last time this was actually flown. It's got air in the tires, it's got chocks, so that's a promising sign. But it also is covered in snow, the paint is peeling. That's not a good sign. I mean, there's paint flecks in the snow, that's not a good sign. But then the exhaust stacks are plugged. That's a good sign. Uh, if you wonder where we are, we are in Midway, Utah. Uh, primarily actually Heber, Utah. And uh, they have a decent amount of snow here, as you can tell by this, okay, 650 cows. Look at this machine gun in the back. Uh, another, what I believe is a set of machine guns up here. Rotating uh, turret. Do some research on this guy tonight, see what it is. This thing's been sitting a while. And you can just tell it has for the condition of the paint. You know what I love about aviation is there's always something new to learn. I have never seen one of these aircraft in my life. And I've seen tons of airplanes. And this is brand new to me. I've never seen one of these in person. So I'm literally clueless as to what it is. It's like a mix of a B-25, B-24, and a C-45. If they all had a baby, <laughs> this would be it. I mean, that, look at that turret system. I've never even seen something like this before. Wow. Well, 
Look at that. That's amazing. This is the shell ejection slots. Pretty sure these are 50 cal. They look like 50 cal guns. Wish I could climb up in the cockpit, but this is not my airplane. And I put myself in their shoes. I would not want to find somebody climbing up inside it. A plane that I do not own. It's pretty neat to see this though, sitting right here. In this, I mean, it's kind of ironic. This guy's running with a polar bear and it's snow covered, and this plane is covered in snow. <laughs> Here's the engine codes if you're wondering. Let's see if the data plate is there's the data plate. I don't know if I can reach up to it. Pretty big engine. Maybe our 2800s. Our 2800s, I bet. And I don't know if this does have combat history or if that's just fictitious, but it looks like a decent amount of bombing runs and a couple of zeros. snow is deep it's kind of sad uh, watching this thing this thing just sit out here and rotting away for as complete as it is I don't know if I would coin this necessarily abandoned uh, per se just because of the condition that it's in but it's definitely has not flown in quite some time is my guess uh, just by the condition of the exterior. I mean, the turret is covered. That's a promising sign. And the engine is plugged as far as, uh, you know, nest preventative. But there's a decent amount of snow on this, and the paint is not a good sign as the, it being currently airworthy. If you know anything about this plane, seriously, post down in the comments, because I love finding aircraft I've never seen in person before, and this is one of them. I, this thing caught my eye when I was driving down the highway uh, and I was like, I gotta figure out what this is because it's like a part B-25 but then it's too big to be a C-45 and I'm like, machine guns? I gotta see what this is about. There's a decent amount of oil here. I, I'm, this hasn't been sitting like decades. That's fresh oil. Really cool bomber slash fighter or radar intercept, night fighter. I don't know what this is. These uh, aircraft variants fascinate me because there's so many of them. It's It's unbelievable. Yeah, I'd love to see like a P-61 Black Widow in person. I've always wanted to see one of those with that remote control turret on the top and being a night fighter slash bomber um, attack type aircraft platform, I guess. It's fascinating. I'd be curious what the history of this is. So I, got, I have some research to do. But if you know anything about it, seriously post down in the comments. I'd love to hear it. it looks like Bombay doors on the bottom. So that's 
obviously it's a bomber platform but um a well defended bomber platform and yeah hopefully you enjoyed this uh coverage of this aircraft because it's a brand new to me so i figured i'd document it All right, so obviously this video that you just saw this aircraft, I had no clue what it was. It came upon it randomly and I just documented it. Well, I got home after we left the uh, airport and I did some research on it. Apparently it's actually a pretty rare aircraft. There's only three on the US side that are quote unquote airworthy, but in reality, less than one on the US side is airworthy. This particular bird was built in 1944 to 45 and its primary mission, it was built by Lockheed, and it's a PV-2 Harpoon. Its main role was uh, air-to-ground attack and air-to-ground bombing. It actually had a very good performance category. It had twin Pratt & Whitney R2800 uh, radial engines and up to 1050 cal uh, gun systems, uh, as well as a rocket system. Reading about the history of the PV-2 is also pretty fascinating, primarily be uh, one excerpt that was in uh, an article, or I should say a pilot's diary, they were doing air-to-ground attacks with rockets, and they uh, noticed over a few months of air-to-ground bombing slash rocket attack missions that the PV-2 wing spars were showing signs of fatigue from the high G loading, quote-unquote high G loading. And they returned to normal bombing missions after realizing that they could potentially uh, damage this aircraft beyond flight capability. I thought that was hilarious to read about. Uh, this one, I don't know a lot about as far as airworthiness. I know it, I don't think it's been flying for quite some time. I tried to dig more into it uh, as far as the owner. The Hansen uh, is the cor current owner of it. It was in uh, operating service up until uh, the late 60s, early 70s. Uh, it was actually used as a uh, aerial spray aircraft, which I thought that was fascinating. I can't imagine that big of an aircraft doing aerial spraying for agriculture. And then uh, it was rescued in the uh, late 90s, early 2000s and restored to flying condition um, in 2000, I believe 14, 15. But there's not a lot of info on it as far as its current status or any of that. Uh, the history of it also is pretty fascinating. Obviously, it was in contract by Lockheed for a military contract to do various work for the Navy. Uh, like I said, it was used for air-to-ground air attacks, bombing, um, and uh, it actually had a very good performance category, but it lacked an actual payload capability, so it was not the first choice for most of the uh, military forces such as the uh, Army Air Forces and the Navy. So that's why you don't hear a lot about them. Uh, its final variant was used by uh, reconnaissance and the Coast Guard, which I also thought was pretty fascinating. And then, uh, like I said, there's not many of these in existence. Uh, and from an airworthy standpoint, there is at least one currently, possibly two, but uh, that are airworthy in the U.S., uh, inevitably probably worldwide. So it's an aircraft that is not seen very often by the public eye, especially in running condition, which is understandable because, like I said, I've never seen one in person, and this was a first for me, and I was absolutely clueless what this aircraft was. So there's a little history on it for you. And like I said, if you know anything more about this particular aircraft, airframe, pilots, stories, post them down in the comments because I absolutely love hearing World War II uh, aircraft and aviation tales. And uh, well, thank you for watching. Hit that subscribe and like button and more aviation videos to come.